there was a time when one of these cost a nickel. And thems, well, that'd set you back about a buck thirty. But by the end of the year, it'd be a dollar seventy. Let's find out why. This is the 1933 501 episode, now on Den and Denim. You and you and you and you put shoulders to the plow. When Levi's Vintage Clothing decides which years to recreate, they usually have some symbolic reason related to the development of the 501 design. Most of the 501 evolution is linear. Belt loops come, they stay, the cinch goes away, and never returns. But the 1933 model is one of the rarities. It celebrates a particular moment in American history, the Great Depression. Basically, the economy in America sucked for the entirety of the 1930s. After the stock market crashed, President Hoover's plan was to do nothing for three years, and it made things even worse. Newly elected FDR got his legislation, the New Deal, passed through Congress in 1933. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You and you and you and you, you've got a president now. He gave the land a New Deal. You hold the cards, now you deal. The New Deal had two aspects of helping the country to reduce unemployment. One was the PWA, Public Works Administration. This created jobs to build infrastructure. The Golden Gate Bridge was not built from this, but the Bay Bridge was, along with the Hoover Dam, the Lincoln Tunnel, a slew of airports, and housing tenements. The other part of the New Deal was the National Industrial Recovery Act. This regulated working conditions and capped corporate profits. A lot of companies were proud to be part of the NIRA. So much so that they stuck a label on their products to show consumers. Now, this tag doesn't mean that the government can come and take back the jeans you paid for. If the company followed the rules of the NIRA, then they could display the tag. Each company used their own version of the label. Most of them featured a blue eagle. The tag wasn't meant to be displayed for the wearer, but to be a form of advertising. The NIRA, was seen as favorable at first. I got a new job and it's great to be working again. Thanks to President Roosevelt's plan, the NRA, which has made it possible for me to resume my position as a manager. However, the practice was hated by bosses who didn't want to pay higher wages. In practice, it was controversial. Within two years, the Supreme Court unanimously declared the NIRA to be unconstitutional. Technically, these genes with the NIRA label should be 1934. I think the 1933 year is more symbolic because it is the year the construction for the Golden Gate Bridge began. And then the bridge opened in 1937, thus the other 1930s pair of 501s. The main feature for these jeans is the Blue Eagle Naira label with AOJ number 263016. This little tag sticking out that should have been removed by the customer is the main reason for choosing to buy this year. The 1933501 is currently the only LVC item to feature the Naira label. This pair is a mix of historical and classic features. It's a beast of a jean with exposed rear rivets and a crotch rivet, suspender buttons, now that's a lot of metal sticking out. It also has a cinch, one of the beautiful two-tone silver and copper cinches also seen in the 1937 501. Single needle arcuate stitching. Then some classic features, red line selvage, albeit 10 ounce and not yet the 12 ounce, two rear pockets, Leather patch, belt loops. The fit is loose. There's some extra room in the thighs and the calves, but it doesn't have a baggy look. You can downsize half a size, but you probably want to make use of the cinch and the belt or the cinch and spinner buttons 
So get your true size. They should sit closer to the navel, but most folks are wearing them hanging a little lower. I'd like to thank Wo Awela for letting me use his modeling footage. You can check out his full video on the 1933 pair. Link in description. This is a pair that's meant to be bought rigid. I mean, the main reason for getting this pair rigid is the Naira tag. You might also want the beautiful cinch it comes with from the 1930s. There's a rough rinse. This is a dark wash, similar to the new rinse. Callaway, a heavily distressed but wearable. Gorgeous honeycomb on the back knees. Memories, another distressed pair. Explosion. This medium blue still has the cinch and the Naira tag. It also has flared ankles. Something way ahead of its time. Be on the lookout for the Workerholic with suspenders. This pair, be on the look. Be on the lookout for the workerholic. This pair comes with suspenders. It's actually the nicest pair of LVC suspenders I have seen them make. Something called scratch. There's a pair of women's shorts. Although the suspender buttons and cinch have been removed. For the limited editions, we have two amazing pairs. One, the Arizona Cowboy. Not much of a story behind this pair, it just reflects on the fact that men were cutting the cinch off because they were using belts by this point in time. The absolutely most fascinating pair, limited edition 500 numbered, the tow rope. Story goes, a man, man driving saw another driver stranded. He offered to tow him, but his rope wasn't long enough. So he added length with an old pair of 501s and towed the car to the next town safely. This limited edition numbered 500 pairs comes with ropes tied to the ankles. You can untie them to have a wearable pair of jeans. And it all fits in the most unique case LVC has featured. An oil can designed to look from the era. A couple of other items I'd like to mention. The cutest pair of sample jeans I've ever seen, mostly because the buttons, patch, cinch, rivets, label are all regular size, but then the cut and stitching is just micro. Those little pockets, nothing fits over each other. LVC has not made a jacket with the Naira label. However, historically, there are some pairs. There would be a 506 Type 1 jacket with the tab. There would also be a 213 jacket from the budget lot. And we have a relic in the archives known as the Phyllis jacket. Phyllis Starkey was a woman who purchased this jacket in 1934 and stitched her name with a little label inside of it. And again, most women's items are named after the women, whereas the men's items are usually named from where they were found. To the owner of this 501 jean, the 1933 501 jean, a pair of jeans from 1933 had belt loops, but still had the cinch and suspender buttons, offering a variety of ways the pant could be worn. Some owners wore their jeans with a belt. They cut off the cinch right at the rivet and snipped off the suspender buttons, choosing to wear their jeans not like the older generation did with suspenders. Some Levi's brand realtors even kept a big pair of scissors at the cash desk to cut the cinch off for customers. The 1933 501 jean also featured the redesigned guarantee ticket on the back of the jeans. The company had trademarked the name Levi's in 1927 because any pair of denim pants were being called Levi's, no matter who made them. Instead of reading, this is up of them, as seen in the original ticket from 1892, the new ticket read, 
This is a pair of Levi's. Also, hidden under the leather patch, but not visible until it began to shrink with age, is a tiny white cloth printed with a blue eagle and the letter NRA. This was the National Recovery Act logo, which Levi Strauss and Company was allowed to use because the company abutted by the labor rules of President Franklin Roosevelt's National Recovery Act during the Depression years of the 1930s. Here's the letter about the tow rope. March 2nd, 1938. Gentlemen, I am sending you a pair of Levi's with a real, believe it or not, history. I've had these Levi's for about six years and had practically pensioned them off. I carried them in the back of my car because once in a while, I needed them to change a tire. About a week before last, I saw my good neighbor MK stranded beside the road with his motor dead. We were about four miles from San Mateo, so I offered to tow him in. But he had no tow rope and I had only two small pieces. Not enough by far. We looked everywhere, but the only thing we found was my old Levi's. Now the label had long since faded away, but I can clearly remember the two horses with the Levi's outstretched between them. I tied the ropes on each leg and hitched onto the car, and towed him over a hill and onto San Mateo. I know this is a lot to impose on anything, much less a pair of pants. But they bore the strain worthily, and there was not the least sign of a rip when I told the story. My friend suggested that I tell you all about it. So here you are, and I believe that if you patch them up a bit, someone might get another five or six years out of them. Yours truly, Mr. Elton Scram, Ridge Road, Belmont, California. Usually the evolution of the 501 tells a linear story. Every once in a while, there's a few oddity pairs that stick out. And these are worth collecting for these memories of it. Now, the 1933, just that little tag ain't much to speak of, a complete reason. But if you want all three fasteners, it's the easiest pair to find. It is a beast of a gene. And I think it's one of those jeans that not everyone has, not as popular as a 47 and 55, but the people who have them absolutely love that pair. I'd like to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. If you want to join, there's lots of extra bonuses once you join. It starts at a dollar a month. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan. This is Dan and Dana. Love your jeans. You take this message straight from the president and give a man a job.